Hello and welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial I'm just going to show you two math functions that can be rewritten in PHP. One of them is a polynomial function. So let's say we have the polynomial 3x squared plus 4x plus 1. And we easily just want to return a value where we input our own x value. So we can say x equals 5. So as we do in math, we replace or substitute our x with a 5. So we have 3 times 5 squared plus 4 times 5 plus 1, like so. And then 3, 5 squared is 25, so that plus 20 plus 1. 3 times 25 is 75 plus 20 plus 1. And in the end, we should get 96. Now I'm going to show you how to do that. <coughs> by submitting an array of values and an x value and to get that 96. We're not going to input a value like so. We're going to put in a value, an array of these three digits. It's going to go in descending order of the factors. So we have a factor of 2x squared, a factor of 1, and then a factor of 0 x to the 0 is 1, as is anything raised to the 0th power. But if we continue adding, adding more numbers, it would be x to the 3rd here, x to the 4th, etc, etc. But we're just going to stick with 1, 4, and 3 for now, and just so we know our answer is going to be 96 in the end. So let's go ahead and start creating that uh, function. But first I'm going to create our array of values that we're going to use. So we're going to call it array and we're going to put in 1, 4, and 3. And let's go and define our function. We're going to call it function polynomial. And we're going to give it two parameters. One of them is our array of values and our x value. And inside here, we're going to loop through the, or the array using a while loop. Not a for each loop or a for loop. We're going to use a while loop uh, just because the method is easier this way and we won't have to run into any certain problems. So uh, I'm going to create two variables here. I'm going to call the first one's going to be n, and that's going to be the length of the array. So in PHP, it's count and then the array variable name. And our second uh, variable here is result. I'm creating this uh, variable beforehand just so when we try to append a value to this, we're not going to get an undefined variable error when we go and execute the script. So now we're going to set up our while loop and we're going to set it to while n is greater than or equal to 1. The reason for this being n is greater than or equal to 1 is what I'll show you when we finish writing this, just so it makes more sense. So in this while loop, we're going to have two calls. We're going to, we're going to append the result uh, variable. So we're going to do result times x, and then we're going to add our polynomial value n minus 1. Now if you go here and you look at this, when it reaches this one point it's going to do poly 1 minus 1 which is equal to poly 0. But if we kept it going below 1 we're going to have poly 0 minus 1 which is equal to poly 0 negative or poly of negative 1 which is an undefined offset in the array. That's why we want to keep it above and equal to 1. And then after we append our result variable, we're just going to subtract 1 from our n value. And in the end, we're just going to return our result. And if we did this correctly, we should get 96. So I'm going to go ahead and echo polynomial. We have our array, and our x value is going to be 5, not 50. Save it, and... 96. Now I was going to show you how to do a stack trace with this. So let's see here. Let's close our PHP here. Actually, let's keep it open. Um, the stack trace is just going to go through. Uh, it's actually a substitution trace, not a stack trace. But it's going to go through. Uh, and show you what changes every single time. So every single time 
n is always going to be equal to count poly when before the while loop. But nothing changes before the while loop, only inside the while loop. So inside the while loop, we're starting off with n equals 3 as our beginning. So right now we have result, so is equal to 0 times 5 plus whatever we have at the end. So poly of 3 minus 1, which is 2. And the way arrays work is that the keys start at 0 and go to 1 and then go to 2. So it's really looking at this one here. So plus that. And then we're going to subtract 1, so now n is equal to 2. And in the result, we have, um, what do we say, 0 times 5 plus 3 is equal to 3 by order of operations. So now that we have n equals 2, we're going to go result equals 2, or 3, times 5 plus four because it's two minus one. So that would give us fifteen nineteen nineteen. And now n equals one. That's after subtracting that from the end here. We have result equals nineteen times five plus one. Because one minus one is zero. And like I showed here the first key in the array is 0, and that is linked to the element 1. So 19 times 5 is 95, plus 1, 96. We return our result, and it's going to return 96 for us. That is a simple substitution trace that goes through uh, as a value is decreasing, like so. Okay, now we're going to move on to the second one. I'm going to create a new file here. And this time we're going to do a factorial. And a factorial is written in math like that 5 or n exclamation point. In, the, in our example, we're going to use 5. So what a factorial is. It's 5, or it's n to n sub n times n sub n minus 1, so et cetera, until it's 0. So 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is what a factorial is going to look like. And uh, that result, if we do it out, 20 times 3 times 2 times 1, 60 times 2 times 1, 120 times 1, 120 is what 5 factorial is equal to. So let's go ahead and write our code for that. I'm just going to create a function. There's no need for any variable names here. So we're going to create a function called factorial, and we're going to give it the parameter of n. We need a base case here. When n gets down to 0, it's going to... We can't have it multiply by 0 we have to multiply it by 1. Because if if that wasn't the case, 5 factorial would equal 0. So if n is equal to 0, we're just going to return the value 1. That's it. It's going to stop the code there when it gets to that point. Now we're going to create two variables. We're going to create a previous variable. This is just our holder variable. Um, and then we're going to, this is a recursive call, so it's factorial n minus 1. This will continue going down until it gets to that point of 0. And our second variable is current, which is going to be our current n value times its previous n value. And in the end, we're just going to return our current value. So if we go ahead and echo factorial 
of 120. Let's save it. Let's call this math2.php. Should get 120. Oh, that's a large number. Where did we go wrong? Oh, I did the factorial of 120, which obviously is a very large number. Did not note that. So factorial 5 gives us 120. Let's go ahead and do a sub sub it's actually not a substitution trace really. It's more of it's a stack trace because it's recursive. So our stack trace when we first call it we're going factorial of 5. And what that's going to do is going to set previous equal to factorial 4. And at that point we're not yet getting to our current value. We're going to go and do a factorial of 4 now. And then at that point, previous is equal to factorial of 3. And that's going to call a factorial of 2. And now here, oh, we got to call a factorial of 3. And previous is equal to factorial of 2 now. And then factorial 2, it's going to call that. And it's going to say previous is equal to factorial 1. And then lastly, we have factorial 1, which sets previous equal to factorial of 0. Now we've hit our base case. And at this point, it's going to return 1. So we're going to come back to our factorial of 1 here now. And it's going to now define current. So now current is equal to 1 times our previous, which is now 1. So we're at 1. Now we go back to our factorial of 2, which sets current equal to 2 times 1, which is our previous. And then here at factorial 3, current is now equal to 2 times 3. Back here at 4 now, uh, let's see, let me get the tabs right. Current equals 6 times 4. And lastly, current in the end will equal 24 times 5, and that will return 25 or 24 times 5, 120. That's a basic substitution or stack trace for the factorial, and that shows you how it really works. This is. Uh, it's a lot less complicated when you look at it like this, but when you go into a stack trace or a substitution trace that we have here, it makes more sense, sort of. So, if you wanted to, you could try it with a bigger number. 6. This is 6 times 120 now, really. And that'll give us 720. You can go up to as much as you want. 10 should give us like a 3 million number. Yep, 3,628,800, and so forth. These two functions are pretty fun, or not fun, they can be fun to some, but they're pretty useful in a lot of ways. Uh, factorials, you don't have a calculator on hand. Maybe you have this PHP script. Okay, for some reason you have this PHP script. So I need the factorial of 6 right now, 720. You got it. You need a, you're having trouble in math? You can't figure out what 3x squared plus 4x plus 1 is with x value of 5. You got that now. With 96. I don't, I don't have it returning. But you get it. It makes more sense, in programming at least, how it's going to give you that value that you want. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And uh, if you did, go ahead and subscribe thumbs up, and uh, thanks for watching. 
Also, you can check out mpsoftware.dk for a free 21-day trial of PHP Designer 7. Thank you and have a good day.